Lord. We praise you, Jesus. We worship your holy name. You are so worthy. You are so worthy to be praised. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. You are the first and you are the last. You are our King of Kings, our Lord of Lords. You are our protector, our provider, our healer, our banner and our standard. You are our righteousness. You are our shepherd. You are our God always there. You are our peace. We call upon your name, Jehovah Shalom. Come and fall upon us now. That transcends all understanding. Let your peace rule and reign in our hearts. Like an umpire giving us unctions. Which way to turn, which way to go. What to do and how to do it. Spirit of the living God. Come and move in each of our hearts. It is written that God directs the footsteps of the godly. Therefore, Lord, everyone that is in this place, you have directed their footsteps to this house. And Father, I just pray that every heart will be open to receive from you this morning. Lord, I pray that you till the hard soils by your spirit right now. Remove every weed and thistle and thorn that might hinder the word from entering into the soil. Holy Spirit, give us eyes to see and ears to hear. May we hear the voice of God. Accurate, clearly, correctly, and with boldness, and never in vague impressions. May we see the awesomeness of your teachings today, as we are opening our hearts to receive. Lord, as you've directed each one to be here today, we pray in unity, come and move in a mighty way. Move in our hearts, move in our lives, move in our circumstances, move in our relationships, move in our marriages. Businesses, come and have your will, your way, your plan. Oh, our Father, our Lord, Master and Savior. We adore you, we honor you, and we commit this service unto you. And we give you in advance all the glory, the honor, and the praise for every good work of change that will be taking place in every heart, in every mind, in every life. Lord, it is only you that can change circumstances. It is only you that come and change a person's heart. And Lord, if there's anyone that came in today with a stony heart, may you remove that stony heart and replace it with a heart of flesh to receive the free gift of salvation that Jesus paid for. Abba, we trust in you. We trust in you to receive our instructions this morning from our manual, the book of life, the word of God. We trust to receive impartation by your Holy Spirit this morning. So we invite you and say, have your way, Lord, in Jesus' name. And all those who believe to say, Amen. Amen. Good morning, precious family. And I want to welcome each and every one of you that are here today. For those who don't know me, my name is Pastor Marita Smith. And I just want you to look 
at the person next to you and tell them it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen in Jesus' mighty name. So, among us here today are those very, very special people. And I want to ask you, if you are here today for the very first time, I want you to please raise your hand so that we can give you the warmest welcome ever that CFCI has. Do we have any first-time visitors? Yes, we do. Praise the Lord. A warm welcome to you um, in this house. And may God really bless you today with a message that He's got especially for all of us. And then also I want to ask you, at the end of the service, for all our beautiful new people, if you look to my right there at the back, there is a part there that says welcome. So I want to encourage you of the church, please come and have some coffee with me there so that we can chat and that we can get to know you a bit better. You will also find on your brochure that the ushers has given you, there's a coffee and a treat stuff. Just bring that along so that we can spoil you a little bit and hear where you're from. We just want to love upon you. And that, I just want to remind all of us that the clipboards will be circulating. Please fill in all your details on these clipboards. And remember, this does not make you a member of the church. It just helps us to take better care of you in all of this. And then it's my privilege this morning to introduce our speaker for this morning. And I'm a very big fan of him. And I just want all of us to put our hands together for Jesus, for bringing the message through Pastor Evan Smith. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor. Hallelujah. So good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Pastor Eben Smith, and I'm a son of this house. And I want to thank the father and mother of the house, Pastor Percy and Pastor Lee, for entrusting me with the main message this morning. I would like to share with you on the topic of the fruit of love and the root of rejection. But first, let's close our eyes in prayer. Dear Father God, as we gather this morning, Father, in your name, Father, as we bring the word in this morning, Lord, I let it be made known, Father, that I do not depend on my own abilities, Father, but solely on you, Father, to talk through me and teach through me this morning, Lord. I pray that the words of my mouth, Lord, and the meditations of my heart, Lord, be acceptable in your sight. And Father, please... Open our ears, Father, our spiritual ears this morning, Lord. And let no one leave your house unchanged in this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Family, the fruit of love and the root of rejection. One of God's great generals, his name was Lester Sumrall. He was one of the great healing evangelists. And he once said that the two foundation stones upon which the gift of the Spirit is laid, is unity and love. Family, love is a key to unlock all that God has for us today in the times we live in. Let's read 1 Corinthians 13 verse 1 to 3. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but I do not have love, I have become a sounding brass, a clanging cymbal, and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but I do not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but I have not love, it profits me nothing. Amen. Now the love of God is poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, the river of living water. Amen. Let's look at Romans 5 verse 5. Now hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So we have the God kind of love in each and every one of us. 
And it is our responsibility as God's children to learn how to grow and develop that kind of love. And we each have different personalities. God has each created us in a unique way. And the totality of our qualities and traits and characteristics and behavior, that is something that's peculiar to each individual person. And these characteristics sometimes make us socially appealing to other people or otherwise or not. And in Ephesians 3 verse 16, Paul prayed to the Ephesians that they will be strengthened in the inner man by the Holy Spirit. Let's look at the scripture. That he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his Spirit in the inner man. Family, we are socially appealing if we are good and kind to people. Our personalities are a combination of our God-given temperament, our experiences, and the efforts we have made to develop our character. Some people can actually have a good temperament, an evil, an even temperament, not an evil temperament. <laughs> but they may have had some bad experiences or past hurts. And these negative influence can cause some of us to have a lousy personality. And we read in the Bible that walking in love and excellence goes hand in hand. If we look at Daniel, we see that he walked in love and there was an excellent spirit in him. Although he was also a person who living in difficult circumstances. Does anyone, is anyone here who will say that sometimes circumstances around here is difficult? Amen. But the Bible teaches us in Daniel 6 verse 3, Then this Daniel distinguished himself above the government and satraps, because an excellent, an excellent spirit was in him, and the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. So Daniel was highly esteemed because he walked in love, and there was an excellent spirit in him. The love of God was poured out into his heart by the Holy Spirit. Amen. But family, we cannot live a life of excellence if we do not walk in love. Let's look at 1 John 4 verse 12. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and His love is made complete in us. So when we show God's love to somebody, God is there. And when we are kind to someone, God is there. And when we give somebody something in the name of Jesus, God is there. And when we mess up and we apologize to someone, God is there. Amen. But family, did you know that rejection is one of the causes of Christians being unable to walk in love? It is one of the most hurtful things attacking Christians in the bride of Christ today. It is a stronghold, and it opens a door to the enemy. An open door is how a demon comes in or can oppress Christians. But a stronghold is something that allows that demon to stay there and keep on oppressing people. So rejection is something that wants to destroy your mind. And it is a spiritual mindset that causes people to live in mental anguish. And we can see it in the life of the Israelites. When they came out of Egypt, they lived in God's promises. God fed them. They never um, had any lack of anything. But they still had a hurtful mindset that came from their oppression in Egypt. And sometimes we can walk in God's blessing and God's blessing is all around us. But we don't see it because we are in the wrong mindset. But family, the Bible teaches us in 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4 to 5, that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God, for pulling down strongholds and casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Let us confess the following. I do not have to remain captivated by strongholds, 
of rejection, bitterness, or rebellion. I have the authority to pull down the strongholds in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, family, in Corinth, we Paul wrote this letter to the Corinthians. There was a mighty fortress in that city. It had had high towers, and there were people who were being kept captive in that fortress. And a stronghold has walls and high towers in our souls and our spirits. It is a fortress of lies built up in our minds. And sometimes it might be considered as truth by the unsaved world around us, but it's not God's truth. It is a world view, but it's contrary to the word of God. And towers speak of thoughts that exaggerate itself against the word of God, exalts itself against the word of God. And uh, captivities, people who are held in captive, speaks of thoughts that we have to take captive in obedience to the Lord. But let's talk a bit more about this particular stronghold that I want to share with you this morning. You see, every child has a basic need of love and acceptance and identity. Identity means a sense of belonging. Every child needs a sense of belonging. They need to be recognized and valued. They need to have a sense of determination, of purpose in their lives. And this love must be communicated from a very young age to those children by their parents. They must be received by the eyes, the way their parents look at them, the way they speak to them, the way they touch them, and the way they spend time with children. And if these needs of children are unfulfilled, then it causes a vacuum in which rejection grows. And every child has an emotional tank that keeps him or her going. And if that tank is not filled daily with love and acceptance, the child is, if it is filled with love and acceptance, the child will function well. And family, this is true, I can share for, for me even from my own life. Because I grew up with a father who never showed physical love to me. And he was a person who was working very hard and provided well for his family, but he always came home late and then he was angry. And I never learned how to show physical love. But praise God, by the time I had my own children, I attended a seminar where someone spoke about the value of a father's love. And I learned there that I need to show physical love to my own children. And it did not come naturally to me. But I hugged my children and I gave them physical love. And the more I did it, the more natural it came to me. And I can thank God today that this cycle is not perpetuated in my family anymore. Praise the Lord. Amen. So family, a child receives his own identity and self-worth from his relationship with his father. But when rejection starts growing, it destroys the whole person. And in ourselves, in our flesh, we have no defense against it. But in the spirit, we can pull down the stronghold. Hallelujah. Rejection causes an unstable relationship with God. Because a rejected child is caught up in a pattern of thinking that he needs to perform to be acceptable. But thank God, no matter what we think, God's thoughts about us never changes. Amen. So what are the sources of rejection? The main source in our society today of rejection is absent fathers who leave the upbringing of their children to their mothers because they are too busy to work in the society that we live in, a materialistic society. Madonna always used to sing that song, you know that we are living in a material world and I'm a material girl, but we have material fathers and in the world view today you are acceptable if you have a lot of mullah, if you have a lot of money. So to many people it's very important to have a lot of money and sometimes it becomes more important than spending time with your family. 
But the rejection can also be caused by cruel remarks. And how many of us have experienced this in school? Cruel remarks by other children about our unique physique or about our performance in school, in sports. Cruel remarks by teachers. Clicks. Clicks in school. Clicks in society. Exclusivity. Racism. And insensitive remarks about physical changes in the bodies of other people. That can also cause rejection. And it can also be caused in love relationships. Because when your partner in a love relationship denies your identity, you feel rejected. You know, in our culture, people used to say to their wives, I told you that I love you before I married you, and if it changes, I will tell you. So there's no need for me to say to you, I love you every week. So that is also, that causes a lot of rejection. These cowboys don't cry, roughing it kind of mentality causes a lot of damage. So if you are treated as a worthless person, you are marginalized or thrown away like garbage. And that can cause rejection to grow in you. And the loss of the love of a loved one is one of the worst forms of rejection. It can also happen in churches where you serve loyally and you give all you got. And then there is a change in leadership and you are marginalized. And your work is no longer a priority. And your work is dismissed. Some people have got deeply injured in churches because of rejection. And the end of any long relationship may result in rejection. So that can cause you to make, um, to make a decision that you, will not, you don't want to get involved in relationships again because you don't want to be rejected. And we, this is a decision that you make in bitterness. And it causes a lot of damage in your life. Because God has some good things for you, but you don't want to take hold of it. Amen. So when people are divorced and their previous spouse remarries, that is when rejection peaks. Because then they know it's final. What is going to happen now to my little children who are staying with another father or another mother? So what are the fruits of rejection? It manifests in adulthood. You see, when you're alone and you grow up, you can still lock it up in fall 13 somewhere in your mind and you say you forget about it and whatever, but when you get married and you have to live with someone close to you all the time, you can't pretend all the time anymore. And that is why it manifests in adulthood. You start showing the fruits. Because you have the root of rejection, you have a stronghold in your life. It results in emotional immaturity, fear and loneliness, self-rejection, loss of self-identification, becoming self-centered and trying to fill an emotional vacuum with possessions, bad habits and objects. And family, smoking and drinking and fornication can all be symptoms of an emotional vacuum. People either lose their appetite or they, or they start to eat excessively to ease the emotional pain. And sometimes alcohol and smoke are nothing more than emotional painkillers because they suppress emotions. But unfortunately they don't get rid of the bad emotions, they just suppress them. And the more you take it, the more you need to suppress that emotions. And at the end of the day, you find that no amount of alcohol or cigarettes are going to suppress it anymore. And then you are at the end. So, beware of those emotional painkillers. Thankfully, God and His Word has a way of dealing with this, to remove these painful memories. But we'll come to that just now. So, if you are rejected, you might take a, you might take an inner vow in yourself that I am weighed and found wanted and it settles in your emotional brain you say to yourself that you are not good enough and that can open the door to a demonic power of inferiority that starts afflicting you and causing pain to you rejection destroys marriages because two injured people cannot make one healthy marriage 
The one reacts out of rejection and say to the husband, you're going to divorce me, you're going to find someone else. At the end of the day, the husband cannot take it any longer and he does fulfill that prophecy that was spoken over him repeatedly many times. So that is a way that rejection can destroy marriages. If you are hurt by rejection, you reject before you are rejected. So that's why many um, people who are bachelors out there say, I'll, I'll rather stay alone because I don't want to be rejected again. Have you heard that thing, no thank you? I tried it once and I didn't like it. Have you heard it? That's rejection for you. So one person can change into a controller because of rejection. Because they will make this inner vow, I will not allow you to do this to me again. And some people become people's pleasers because they just long for acceptance all the time and they have to perform to be accepted. They've got that inner vow. So that's a way that rejection can cause a breakup of, of relationships. You make an inner vow that you do not, you will not need anything anymore because you don't want to get hurt again. So we've got to find the place where this came into our system and we have to deal with it. And then we will love completely, recklessly, passionately like the Lord loves us. So we must get deliverance from this demonic power of rejection. We must open our hearts so that other people can share with us. But the rejected people don't want to open their hearts. They build walls around their hearts. They are scared of losing a person, but they cause that person to leave them by their behavior. And the loss that they comprehend deep down is activated because the other person is no longer prepared to proceed with the relationship. And the, act, the cycle of rejection is acti activated once more because the other person can no longer cope with them. You see that the Bible told us that the, at the last days, um, ongerechtigheid, what we call it evil um, injustice, will just continue so that the hearts of many people will grow cold. So you get one people, person who is hurt and he goes and hurt another person and he goes and hurt another person. And at the end of the day, a lot of the bride of Christ looks like that. It looks like this person who falls asleep and he wakes up in the middle of the night and he's, something is not smelling nice there. And he lifts up the, the uh, he lifts up the bedding and he sees there lies a beggar, a person with a lot of scratches and scars and sores and unhealed and unbathed, a person who is worn down by life. And he says to this unwanted person, Hey, what are you doing with me in my bed? And that person says, I'm your soul. So that is unfortunately in the times that we live in. And that is why we must turn this thing around in the body of Christ. And we must start getting healed so that we can heal others and turn this around. So will you ever cut out of a meaningful relationship, a friendship, a church, a sports club? Were you ever bullied or insulted? Sometimes cold wars and silence is always is also a way that people, that dejected people deal with others. Some of them don't want to get into a, or an argument. They just say, I'm not going to talk it out with you. And they leave. That is a way of acting out of rejection. And when we are rejected, we start looking at people through a lens of rejection. You know, a person that is very close to me and very dear to me, he's been working for the same employer for the last seven years, but he still very firmly believes they want to fire him. And sometimes if we suffer from rejection, we have to be managed at work. And sometimes a manager with good intentions wants to correct something in us. And we feel so rejected. We think that person is now going to fire us. And, and yeah, we have people in our society who always want to have an open door. So they have to have a back door open always. 
So this person has been working for the same employee for seven years, but he has three other businesses that he runs on the side because he's absolutely got this behavior thing. I'm going to be fired again. So that, that is also a way that people can act out of rejection. So we have to get back to these issues in our emotional brain. And it's not nice. But if it comes up, we have to deal with it. And thank God, the Word of God has given us a way which I'm going to share with you just now. But the fact is that our personalities need healing. So while preparing for this sermon, I saw a video of a young man who spent time in most of the dangerous prisons in South Africa. He was a habitual criminal in his time. And he had the scars to prove it. And then he got saved. And he said, people often ask him, which one of these prisons was the most dangerous? Was it Polsmoor? Was it Leukop? Or Brandfly? Or Elderstrom? But he said, the most dangerous prison are in our heads and in our hearts. And after he was released, he found that out. And people out there are held captive by what men said about them, and they make it their identity. They direct their whole life according to that. That is in the head. And another person has it in his heart, because someone did something to him. And we cannot forgive and let go. And these prisons, we don't have to stay there. We have the ability to free ourselves from these prisons. Amen. So it's time to free ourselves so that we can be what God wants us to be. Because salvation is this journey where we move on from where we are to where God sees us. And be getting born again is just the first step in this journey. Amen. So how do we get out of rejection? The good news is in Luke 4 verse 18 where Lord Jesus read the scripture in Isaiah in the temple and he told the people in the synagogue the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the broken hearted and to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind and to set at liberty those who are oppressed hallelujah and Psalm 23 tells us that, the God, that God restores our souls. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. So the first step to get out of rejection is to forgive those people who rejected you. And the second step then is to ask forgiveness for our sins that we committed because of this rejection. Because sometimes we react in anger and hatred Sometimes we go on and date other people and reject other people. And then we can ask God to heal us. And we can break the root, the stronghold of rejection over our lives. And then we must remember that the enemy is relentless. So we must be relentless. The Bible tells us to submit ourselves to God and resist the devil. So we must find our ident identity in Christ and meditate on scriptures in the Bible about God's love for us. The Word of God tells us that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, and that God thinks about us, that He has got a Father heart about us, and that we are loved and that we are accepted. And so, the last thing that we've got to do is to resist the enemy when he comes to try again with these lying thoughts. The Bible says that we must renew our minds, we must renew our minds with the Word of God. And strongholds are broken over time. The walls of Jericho fell after a process. They had to walk around the city for seven days. And they had to praise the Lord. So the Word of God teaches us in Ephesians 2 verse 10 that we are God's masterpiece. He created us anew in Christ Jesus. So we can do the good things. He had planned for us long ago. So family, if there's anyone here who wants to get free of rejection tonight, or to this morning, sorry, not tonight, I want you to pray this, this prayer with me. Dear Father God, 
thank you that you created me as your masterpiece to show your love to the world. I forgive those that caused rejection to manifest in my life. I ask your forgiveness for the sins I committed in reaction to rejection in my life. I now ask you to heal me and fill the emotional void in me with your love. I now break the roots of rejection over my life. Thank you that you will keep me holy and help me to live a life in peace with others and to overflow with your love. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, precious family. Family, we've come to the most important part in our service this morning. While we are seated here, I just want to ask you to please just close your eyes and just to bow your heads. And I want to give an invitation this morning. The first part of this journey of salvation starts when we accept the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And when we are moved from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. So I want to give this invitation. If you have never given your life to Jesus Christ, if you never made Him your personal Lord and Savior, and you want to do it this morning, while everyone's eyes are closed, I want you to please just raise your hand. And I just want to ask also, if you have once lived in a personal relationship with our Lord Jesus, and you have backslidden, maybe because of something that hurt you in your life, some disappointment, and you decided to move away from the Lord, and you want to make sure today that you are saved, I want to ask you, please, just raise your hand. And lastly, family, in the times that we live in, if you are not absolutely 100% certain that if you leave this building today and you die out there, that you will not be with our Lord Jesus Christ in heaven, and you want to make sure today, I want to ask you to please raise your hand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Family, let's just pray the, the following prayer together to once more commit our lives to Jesus Christ. Father God, thank you for your free gift of eternal life. I know that I'm a sinner and I cannot save myself. I know that your Son, the Lord Jesus, died on the cross to pay the price for my sins. I confess my sins and I ask your forgiveness. Thank you, Lord. I now invite the Lord Jesus to become the Lord of my life. And thank you, Father, as I accept you as my Lord and Savior, that I am now saved and that heaven is my home. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Family, we've come to the most to another important part of our service where we have the opportunity to worship the Lord.
with our tithes and offerings. I just want to remind you that there are envelopes under your seats that you can use. And then um, after the Pastor Marita is going to bless us with the tithe message, you will have the opportunity to come to the sta- stage and just to worship the Lord with your tithes and offerings. Thank you very much. What an amazing privilege it is for us to worship the Lord with our finances. I always get so excited when we get to this point. And you might say, how can you get excited? Because I just know that God is so good. And in that, there's so many promises also for us. But we just do it because we love Him so much. And we have, we have the ability to at least give something back because He's so awesome and amazing to us. So today we are going to look at God's desire to prosper us financially. So in Isaiah 48 verse 17, it says, Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God, who teaches you to profit, who leads you by the way you should go. So let's say, all of us say this together. God is teaching me to profit. Amen. So, who teaches us and trains us the way we should go? It is God. He's the one who promised us that He will teach us, that He will lead us. And those things that would benefit us both in this life and in the world to come. And that He will show us how to get that and how to get there. And the same Spirit of God who led the people of Israel through the desert for that 40 years. The one who rained manna onto them to give them food. The one who opened the Jordan for them so that they could go in and possess the promised land that God had for them. That same Holy Spirit is the one that teaches us and that trains us in the way that we should go. So He guides us and He guards us during our life and our sojourning here on earth. So you know when we lie awake sometimes at night and all of a sudden this brilliant idea comes into our minds of this new business opportunity or, or this new thing. Where do you think that comes from? I know it's your mind and you thought about it, but who put it in there? Yes, it is God that does that for us. So sometimes we need to make very, very important business decisions or financial decisions. And sometimes it's even very hard, these decisions that we need to make. But here's the thing. If we go to God and we pray about it, always He will give us a very wise answer. In Proverbs 8 verse 22 in the New King James it says, that I may cause those who love me to inherit wealth, and that I may fill their treasuries. And it's so Im- interesting that Hebrew word they um, inherit um, um, is the word naukal. I don't know how you say that, but anyway. And one of the meanings of that is to cause to be made to possess or take as an heritage. So this does not mean that we can just sit back and wait so that things will just come and fall into our laps. No, there's an action to this. This talks about action. We must move. We must actually do it. We must go and take that inheritance. Let us look at this verse also. It says there in the beginning, it says... um, That I may cause those who love me. Who is God talking about here? He's talking about us. Yeah, all of us here today. So all of us here today is there to inherit this wealth that God has for us. So those um, who love me will inherit the, the wealth. The work which each one by God's help shall do will be stored up for him in heaven one day. 
So let us also look who else just received an inheritance. Just like that. The Israelites again. When they left Egypt, they took all Egypt's wealth with them. We read in Exodus 12 verse 36, The Lord caused the Egyptians to look favorably on the Israelites. And they gave the Israelites whatever they asked for. So they stripped the Egyptians of all their wealth. They did not inherit it, but God made a way for them. So let's say this together. God causes me to inherit wealth. I believe God's word is true. So I receive it. Proverbs 10 verse 22 in the New King James says the following, The blessing of the Lord makes one rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. I love this verse. Because some people think when you are a Christian, you should be poor and miserable. And you are not allowed to have financial prosperity. While in this verse, it very clearly tells us that God blesses us, And he makes us rich. And he adds no sorrow to that. So let's say this together. God is blessing me financially. He has good things planned for my life. Then in Psalm 35 verse 27b in the New King James, it says, Let them say continually, Let the Lord be magnified, who has pleasure In the prosperity of his servants. How beautiful is that? We see here that it pleases God when we prosper. Why? Because he blesses us so that we can be a blessing to other people into his kingdom. So let's say this together. I say continually, the Lord has pleasure in my prosperity. And then lastly, in Leviticus 27, verse 30, in the NLT, it says that one-tenth of the produce of the land, whether grain from the field or fruit from the trees, belongs to the Lord and must be set apart to Him as holy. So our tithe, whether it is produce, whether it is money, whether it is Um, time that we are giving to the Lord, that is holy and it belongs to the Lord. And we have to set it apart just for Him. Let's say this together. The tithe is holy. It belongs to the Lord. And then we must remember that our tithes, we bring it to the storehouse. We bring it to the temple treasury. It goes into the church where you receive your spiritual fruit. An offering, on the other hand, can be given to any ministry and it can be sowed into any, any place that the Lord is showing you. So I just want you, you've heard that there's some envelopes and I just want you to take those envelopes and let's pray over them. If we all have them together. We say, Father in heaven, we bring these thighs and these offerings to you today. We worship you with them. We dedicate this money, Lord, to your service, to the extension of your kingdom. We know that you receive this sacrifice of worship and that you will bless it for our faithfulness towards you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And I want you today to come, and as an act of faith, I want you to step out and to come and bring your tithe first of all, and saying in that act of faith that I trust you, Lord, for bringing my tithe today, that you will open up the windows of heaven that, and pour out a blessing that is too much to contain for me. And if you bring your offering this morning and you bring it to the front here, I want you to, in that act of faith, saying to the Lord, as I bring my offering, I come to sow my seed into your kingdom, O Lord, 
And thank you, Father, for the harvest that I will receive, a hundredfold harvest, according to your word, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you so much. And everybody that has done Christian growth said, Amen. Amen. Those of you that have not done Christian growth seminar, you're missing out. Don't miss the next one that's coming up on the 4th of March. Bring a friend, bring your children, bring, not children, little children, only those of understanding. Bring your family, come and get to know what the Bible has to say and grow in your spiritual walk with God. It's starting on the 4th of March, right here in this auditorium at 8.45. Don't miss it. Make a note and save the date. Reminder to all our first time visitors that came to visit us today, right over there where the welcome is flashing. Well, it stopped flashing. There it's flashing. <laughs> over there, Pastor Marita will meet you there. Bring your stuff and come and have a coffee with her and a treat so that we can get to know you and love on you. And then, new our new app. You've, some of you have been here and you've heard me talking about it. You've heard Pastor Lee talking about it. We are getting you excited about our very own app. You know what an app is, right? Everyone's got their bank app on their phone, their Facebook app, and every other app on their phone. Now you're going to have your church, CSC Bombella's own app on your phone. So get excited. We are getting ready to roll out with this, that we can get you to download your app, the app, and then we're going to get connected on this app. The next thing I want to tell you is, if you need prayer today, we will have, who's doing prayer today? Pastor Marilyn. Pastor Marilyn will be standing in front here. If you need prayer, please come to the front and um, receive prayer. And then, if there's anyone with prayer uh, testimonies where we've prayed for you or uh, um, something and, and, and God has done something in your life, we would like you to fill in the stub at the bottom. When you go down the steps, there's a big red box with a stub there. Fill it in and put it in the box so that we can call you, so that you can come and share your testimony with the church. Why do we do that? Because we need to give God the glory. It's not about man, it's not about anything, except about giving God the glory. You know, when God cannot move beyond our last level of thankfulness. So let us keep on being faithful and thankful to the Lord. Then our adult cell group starts on this Wednesday, the 1st of March, 2023. And if you would like to join this adult cell group, please leave your name and number on the clipboard at the information desk at the bottom of the stairs. Then our young adults cell group will be starting on the 8th of March. That's the following Wednesday. And if you would like to sign up for that, do the same thing. Go to the bottom at the info desk and put your name and number down uh, on the clipboard. Then don't forget our CFC care services have been moved from Sundays to Thursday evenings. If you would still like to be involved and still like to come and assist Benita and, and, and Christian in the, the, the ministry for the, um, the, the not so fortunate people, please join them. It is an eye-opener to serve in that position. 
to come and see the people that really, really want to know Jesus. Not that you don't want to know Jesus, but it's just an eye-opener to see that what we have and what other people don't have. So come and assist. Come and love on these people. Pastor Evan made such a, a, a brilliant discussion here this morning about rejection. Most of these people have been rejected to the point of going to the streets. So come and love on them and show them the love of Jesus. Amen? So that's on a Thursday evening at 18.30, half past six. If you would like to get involved and serve there, please go to the info desk and put your name down for that. Then we've covered the Christian growth. Then dream team movie night. Can every, can every dream teamer just stand up with you? Hallelujah. Well, you guys standing currently are invited to a movie night. <laughs> it's happening on the 17th of March. Please be by the 7th of March. Why? Because there's something in it for you. You may be seated. <laughs> if you're not yet part of the dream team serving in the house of the Lord, put down your name at the info desk and get connected. Then we also have a family WhatsApp group. If you are not on the WhatsApp group, how can we let you know of all the amazing things happening at church? So please leave your name and WhatsApp number at the info desk. I promise you we're not going to inundate you with lots of silly messages. It's just to advertise what we are doing so that you don't miss what's going on at church. And then... Once a week on a Thursday, I send out a morning truth to encourage you and to uplift you. So please get connected to the WhatsApp group. And that's it for me. Like they say, flate, flate, my story is eight. <laughs> Won't you all stand? Let me release a blessing over you. And please don't forget to join us for a coffee next door. All of us, you are all welcome to join us next door and let's have some fellowship with one another. Father, we thank you for this time that we could spend in your presence. We thank you for the word that has gone forth. And we know, Lord, that the prayer that we prayed to deliver us from this spirit of rejection has worked. We may not see it right now, but in the Spirit it has happened. And Father, we choose to leave this place today, to leave that spirit of rejection here, and to go out here with this, a mentality of not being a victim anymore, but being a victor. Because we are more than conquerors. We are victorious, Lord. And we thank you for our deliverance today, and for healing our broken hearts, and healing those rejections from the past, that we can go Go forth with a full tank, emotional tank, full of the love of the Father, that we can go and love others the way you intended us to do. And Father, right now I just release over each one in this place. The blessing of the Lord that makes one rich and adds no sorrow. I bless you with health, wealth, provision, protection and promotion. And spiritual eyes to see and spiritual ears to hear. In the name of Jesus. If you believe it, shout a big Amen. God bless you family. Love you all. See you next uh, Wednesday. Wednesday's prayer and worship. Don't forget.